All right, Adam Teal, I'm the Fire Commissioner and Emergency Management Director for the City of Philadelphia. Uh, update on the uh, explosion and fire that we uh, had here. This incident started this morning at around 1136. Um, we have placed the fire under control, and again, that simply means that we don't believe the fire is going to spread any further. It does not by any means uh, suggest that we are done here. Uh, shortly after placing fire under the control, we uh, had some of our uh, Rescue One members and our Special Operations Command members go into the building into a very dangerous situation. There's still active fire. Uh, the adjacent buildings are still structurally unstable. To attempt to find a, a known person inside the building and uh, they actually were able to locate someone but uh, that individual was trapped under so much debris that they were not able to uh, to extricate them. So right now we we know there is one person in the building uh, who is uh, most likely deceased and we have reports of one to two other folks in the buildings that are fully collapsed and in one of the adjacent buildings. So we also made a search into one of the adjacent buildings uh, after a reported occupant. And because of the fire conditions in that building and the structural stability, we were only able to make it through uh, about 80% of that building. And we think the, the person might be located in the, the balance of the building. So again, uh, still a very dangerous and unstable incident, despite the fact that the fire uh, the fire has been placed under control. We have still a lot of resources here. We're actually going to have to bring in heavy equipment to start uh, delayering the collapsed building and uh, continue to look for uh, at least one person we know is in there. And then we, again, we have reports of one other person in the collapsed buildings. I do want to mention if there's anybody, you know, down here, you have uh, loved ones or people you haven't heard from in this block. Uh, please come down and just find any uniformed police officer or firefighter and let us know. Uh, again, the thing with a lot of these buildings is, you know, the, the folks who live inside may or may not know their neighbors. So we really do want to, and we don't have a list of who lives in buildings, so we really need everybody to, you believe there's somebody in this block that you know you have not heard from, uh, we want to hear that. So again, all of our partners are out here, the Red Cross, Salvation Army. Uh, I think it's, it stands right now. We uh, have about 60 people who've been evacuated from the block. Uh, we are making arrangements to uh, take care of those folks for as long as is necessary. Uh, again, we have a lot of challenges on this block. Again, potential building collapses. We have a, what we think is a sinkhole forming under the street. So it's uh, it's going to be a long night. So you're basically active for the search and rescue. You're still active going on. I think right now, because of the volume of fire that was in the building, and again, you can see, despite the fact the fire is under control, uh, while we're hopeful, and again, we did make a, a rescue attempt uh, after somebody who uh, we knew was in the building. Uh, unfortunately, we're probably in a, in a recovery mode now. Uh, but again, we'll be out here until we make those recoveries and then fully identify anybody who might have been uh, you know, tragically affected by this incident. So there's, there's at least one other person trapped in there. All we know of is one person, and we have reports of one other person and, and maybe somebody in an adjacent building. But again, it's very early. Uh, again, ongoing incident, so we're not, we're not going to be able to confirm any of that for quite some time. The residents reported that there was uh, work being done on the road earlier this week. Was we we really wouldn't know that. We wouldn't know that. We're still in an active, this is still an active incident. And again, I actually saw some video. Uh, from one of our uh, police officers who was here early. Uh, our first driving companies went into just an incredible, I mean, there's no way to describe it, a, a maelstrom of fire, hanging wires, gas, you know, gas leaking, building collapsing around them to, to try to get into this building and make a rescue. Uh, so I've seen the video, they, they pushed in, just an incredible effort, extremely dangerous. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud today to uh, to work with these men and women of the Philadelphia Fire Department, all of our partners. Uh, we certainly would hope for a better outcome, uh, but rest assured our folks did uh, their absolute level best and, and we'll be here as long as it takes to uh, to get through those recoveries and make sure the uh, you know this incident is fully stabilized.
Can you speak to anything about the gas leak or possible gas leaks being under control? Have they found anything? Well, PGW is still here shutting off. So again, we're not, that's all going to be part of the investigation. And again, we have our fire marshals here, ATF, PPD. Uh, we always work together as a team. And, and again, that's another thing I really want to highlight about this. This is a very complex and multifaceted, very dangerous incident. And the fact that uh, we work so well together uh, with all of our partners that you see around is uh, something that uh, I have, I certainly don't take for granted. Uh, it's a hallmark of what we do here in Philadelphia. And it, uh, it, it's, again, it's really inspiring to see that. And again, we all wish for a better outcome. And I hope we're gonna get folks back in the block as soon as we can. But we have to put safety first. Any first responders okay? Right now, we, have, we don't have any injuries. Okay. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit more about the accommodations for the folks who are displaced? We're still working on that. Okay.